Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the closing webinar of Green Future Farming Program in Ethiopia. And yeah, before we, we start, I want to give you a quick recap of what Green Future Farming, or as we usually call it, GFF, uh, was about. Uh, so GFF was a was part of a G three country program. Uh, so we work together with our partners Aid Environment and Just Dig It, uh, whereby Aid Environment focused on coffee farmers in the hills of Mount Elgon uh, in Uganda, and Just Dig It focused on pastoralists in the arid and semi-arid lands in the south of Kenya. And it's also good to mention that the the entire program was supported by IKEA Foundation. So, but in this webinar, we will only zoom in on the GFF program in Ethiopia, uh, which happened over the past four years. And this program was a collaboration between the bureaus of agriculture from the Ethiopian Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Meta Meta, and of course, the, the farmers and the communities in the region uh, where we operated. Uh, GFF Ethiopia covered two regions, uh, Kubalafto in the Amara region, and Middle Awash in the Oromia region. And the overall goal of the program was to, to strengthen the rural economy uh, by restoring degraded landscapes and introducing regenerative agricultural practices. Uh, so we worked on this transitioning towards regenerative agriculture, more restored landscapes, and more diverse and sustainable livelihoods. So for the transition from linear towards productive regenerative agriculture, uh, we worked along this wheel. And the inside red part of the wheel uh, shows the status quo of linear degraded agriculture. And the outer circle of the wheel in the light yellow color uh, shows the new improved reality of productive regenerative agriculture that we worked towards. Uh, so we worked on the full circle and we aimed to make improvements at every step in the farming system. Uh, so we did not only look at uh, yields, but also at soil health, biodiversity and overall ecosystem uh, resilience. And of course, creating more sustainable livelihoods in agriculture and agribusinesses. So as I quickly mentioned before, uh, GFF was implemented by uh, different partners. And today we have 10 people from the team with us. Uh, we have the team from Meta Meta Ethiopia, um, based in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa. And this is Girma, Radit, Nardal, Sketano, and Guta. Then we have from the bureaus of agriculture, we have Tena, Ketachu, and Bantam Lak. Uh, there are some connections issues, so I hope uh, they can be with us the entire session. Uh, but don't worry, if not, we have a pre-recorded session uh, by Kitachu, just in case. Uh, and then we have uh, Frank and myself from the Meta team, Meta Meta team in uh, in Wageningen present today. Uh, longer, someone in the waiting room. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, we'll start today's session yeah, we'll today. Oh, there's an echo. Something. I hope, yeah, it's gone. Uh, yeah, so we'll start today's session with a shortened version of the GFF documentary, uh, which is made by Guta. Uh, next, Girma and Nardos will share the GFF Ethiopia approach. Uh, unfortunately, we won't have time to dive into all the topics, uh, so we selected a few to share with you today. If there are any more questions, we're happy to um, elaborate on that more in the Q&A or even after this session. Uh, then we'll have our partners from the Bureau of Agriculture to share their reflections on the collaborations and their thoughts on the future and the integration of the GFF approach uh, into their day-to-day -day operations. And then Frank and myself will share a few of the lessons that we've learned through implementing this program in these regions. And of course, we'll end with a uh, time for questions and, and discussions. And also good to note that in case you have any questions or remarks or thoughts uh, during the session, yeah, feel free to put these in the chat and we'll have our team ready to answer these as well. And or we can respond or discuss further at the end of the session. So then we'll start with some footage from the field to give you a bit of better feeling of the program and uh, the farmers and the communities that we that we worked with.
in buffer season or on your region. Green future farming project implementary rural areas in Ethiopia. The north of the country, hilly landscape of Mubala to Reda. The central part of the country at very large lowland in the hilly landscape of our season or on your region. The project implemented for four years is ups and down security problem at both regions. We brought with what we managed to achieve is that it is related to water share rehabilitation, crop based on soil fertility, rural entrepreneurship and community. Among different activities done for the success of this project, soil and water conservation, structures constructed where unforgettable legacy of for EGFF for the water share communities. Noromia region, more than 9,000 hectares of land were covered with biological and physical soil and water conservation structures. Among them, the area closure at Kolobabi, Kakabali, the Jejuara Dawir, for example. in similar manner, in Amara region, in Jarsa and the Gayamba Valley, more than 700 hectares of land covered with those structures. Among regenerative cropping systems done by this project, demonstration of liquid biofertilizer and crop seed were major success of the program. Makanko Abdullah Aman Tare, Jalama Jrata Gandaruta Dore, Ana Jibudin Arsi Ana Jajurai. It doni Taun Kuniga, if you can't attend your own land and the nature of the scene. ታውጀቱራ <laughs> ያመረካው <laughs> For better promotion of those technologies, GFF followed different horizontal approaches like field organization. Some of them 
ጌት ሚዲያ ከበረች የሩጣቱ ወርባደ ካናውን ወደ ሴንተር vertical search technology is also one of important regenerative agricultural practices demonstrated by this project some farmers randomly selected for the promotion of technology started using vermicompost for crop production above all vermical search technology got attention of orome bureau of agriculture and more than 20 orders of our season started constructed for sustainability or watershed rehabilitation workers it was strategic plan of gfa to enable communities to have income source The project supported communities by allocating revolving funds for those participating on watershed campaign and organized as SME on small ruminant farming, rearing, and beekeeping. GFF also provided psychosocial support training for communities of North World suffered by one of Northern Ethiopia. ለማደስ <laughs> መመራሞቹም ራሱ ያደረሙና ደሞ ተመርቱን የሚሳይው ማለት ነው ከትግስት ላይ ትግስት ነው ጨመርኩት ዛሬው ላይ ደሞ ሆቀቱ በጣም ህይወት ይክለኛ ነው ይሄ ቢየ እንደገና ይሄን ልጅ ደሞ ለህብረተሰቡ እኔ አሁን ለምሳሌ ቢያንስ ማንስ አጥሜ በፈቅድ የማስተምረው ሰው ሳልቆጣ ግጭት ምን እንደይፈጠረ ማህበራዊ ኑሮ እንደይናጋ ያልመሰለ ያሆነ ነው ያልታየ ነገር ወሬ ነው ጾም ዲያወራ ወጣም ያለ ሰው ልመልሽ ማህበራሰብ እንዲያደር ግለኝነት ምን ማጋለልም ሁሉ አንድ አንድ ነገሮችን እነሱ ለመከላከል እኔ ራስ ያሁን ራሱ መሳር ይሆናል ነው ይመጣል ኦኬ if you wish to see the entire documentary uh, it's on the GFF Ethiopia YouTube channel we can share the the link in the chat later on then Now I would like to give the floor to uh, Nardos and uh, Germa uh, and they will share more of the GFF approach and uh, dive deeper into uh, several of the topics. Okay, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, I will start. Uh, my name is Nardos uh, for those of you uh, who don't know me and uh, Germa will uh, continue uh, later on. So um, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, you're audible. Good. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, in GFF project, as you just uh, uh, have seen in this uh, documentary video, uh, the, I mean, we were implementing different activities, but now we will focus on some selected uh, approach that we, we were using uh, to uh, uh, make it more time uh, efficient and, uh, you know, uh, present our uh, approach in a more uh, compact way. So uh, one of the approach that we uh, were uh, implementing uh, during GFF uh, Ethiopia was, um, you know, this home uh, made liquid biofertilizer uh, promotion. Actually, it is not only promotion, it starts from uh, how uh, they make. So um, just for uh, some of you who are not familiar with it, it is uh, made uh, from, uh, you know, natural Uh, resources like cow dung um, and it, it, it was actually some of the practice uh, were already in the community and uh, we had some uh, additional information from one of uh, our uh, implementing partner uh, from uh, Italy um, so uh, no sorry from Spain uh, we get uh, uh, information from there 
Uh, we prepare trainings for, uh, you know, um, experts uh, and the model uh, farmers first. Uh, we gave them a training and uh, um, we also provide some uh, materials to start with, just to showcase and then uh, to uh, try to promote to uh, uh, community members in their uh, neighborhood. So um, this is one of uh, the uh, success stories we would like to share. Um, as you see in the uh, photo here, uh, there was a demonstration uh, in um, a Jeju area. Um, and um, it, yeah, it is the liquid biofertilizer that uh, made at home. Actually, we, we currently we use homemade because there are uh, commercial uh, fertilizers. And it was really helpful that uh, these fertilizers can be made really with a, a minimum uh, amount uh, of money, uh, like comparing with uh, the commercial fertilizers, it is like 150 per with 700, 20 per. It, it is really for one hectare. So uh, it was very easy for the farmers to adopt and also uh, to use it. it. It was already in their uh, knowledge. So um, yeah, uh, this was actually very successful uh, due to some reasons. One is the conflict uh, during, uh, you know, the international conflict makes uh, fertilizer very difficult. Uh, as you know, for example, in uh, 2022, the Ukraine and uh, uh, Russia conflict was uh, very, uh, you know, it, the, the impact was also felt here uh, because uh, we import most of our fertilizers from these countries. And uh, uh, at that time, it was very difficult to even access, you know, in one of the reports, uh, by the uh, United States uh, International Trade Administration, uh, it was, uh, you know, 200% um, uh, price increase in uh, accessing those, uh, uh, you know, synthetic fertilizers, and that was very difficult. So at uh, during our uh, project implementation, it was really a, a good time uh, to introduce these homemade liquid fertilizers, and uh, in conflict areas, uh, you know. Uh, even in the country, it was not even accessible to to get uh, those uh, liquid fertilizer. I mean, those uh, uh, synthetic fertilizers. So uh, we uh, come up with uh, this uh, approach. Uh, we train uh, our farmers, and we give uh, the, you know uh, the training, and they uh, were able to produce themselves. They were not really dependent. So that was one of the the best. Uh, uh, benefits uh, that we uh, we uh, get from uh, this uh, intervention. Next, please. Next slide. Yeah, uh, I mean, some of the slides that you see here uh, are also uh, explained in the video, the earlier video. Uh, this is how uh, the, the demonstrations uh, done. And uh, there is actually on how part we, we were really uh, uh, you know, interested to um, uh, to promote it in a bigger scale, and after the training of those uh, farmers and uh, um, you know experts, we uh, use demonstration sites and uh, horizontal learning at different level, like farmer to farmer horizontal learning, uh, expert to expert, uh, and also as a Wereda level and zonal level, we did uh, this uh, approach to to upscale and to uh, you know promote. Uh, these liquid fertilizers to a uh, bigger uh, part of our uh, project implementation area, even uh, beyond. I mean, you already heard that it was even uh, covered by uh, local medias. So the uh, awareness and learning through horizontal uh, learning was one of the uh, best approaches we use. Next, please. Yeah, this is the uh, same thing, but this one is uh, uh, different ex experts, researchers were also part of uh, our intervention. We give uh, this uh, opportunity uh, to, uh, you know, uh, reach out to more people. And uh, it is part of uh, the learning that we, we did in different areas like this here in uh, Tijo Orada. It was a vegetable farm uh, that they were learning among uh, themselves. So. Uh, this is one of the approach that we are uh, we are using. 
نيكست سنديك اهو اوكي اه بس ليه قال انت يا اي ثينك اي بيتر اي بيتر بي فاستر ذا اذر ابروتش ذات وي ار يوزينج از يو نو ذيس ام فلايرز اند مانوالز تو ريتش اوت تو ذا كوميونتي وي بريبير ذيس كايند اوف فلايرز اند ات از ايزي تو ريد ايزي تو امبلمنت اند ذير ار اولسو مانوالز فور ذا فارمرز اند ات واز ايزير فور ذا امبلمنتيشن سو It is more of, uh, you know, the approach that we, we work, actually, I would like to mention, we work with uh, the local uh, experts. Uh, we are using Bureau of Agriculture experts to, to do this, and we also have our own experts to give the training and um, uh, work, in, work in collaboration with uh, Bureau of Agriculture and uh, others. So this was really uh, very, uh, you know, in, in, in our... Uh, Uh, you know, thought it it was really a very well accepted uh, approach, uh, and uh, yeah, this is how we were uh, trying to address. Yeah, we prepare uh, different documents in uh, Afano Romo and Amharic, uh, both the, and also English, of course, for the training uh, and also to disseminate information. So uh, yeah, in general, actually, these uh, biofertilizers can really promote the circular economy principles. I mean. Uh, you know, if the farmers are able to produce uh, on their own at their home, so it will really uh, benefit themselves. And uh, we also think that, uh, you know, it has also a potential uh, for uh, commercialization. Uh, we have uh, seen some experience in Kenya, Uganda. There are uh, some, uh, you know, uh, SMEs who are really promoting this uh, for a commercial uh, purpose. So it has also um, a potential uh, to grow that way. It, it can be like a business uh, model. Next, please. Yeah, the other one uh, activity, you have seen it in the video, is a vermicompost promotion. This was really, uh, really taken up by the government very well. Uh, I mean, we have tried to, uh, it's not the only project that was working, but uh, closer with the uh, Donal uh, and uh, Warada uh, Bureau of Agriculture, uh, we were really promoting very, uh, you know, lower scale uh, Uh, home, uh, you know, at the um, place of the farmers, they were really uh, getting the, the skills to produce from scratch to uh, producing verm vermi uh, compost and uh, even the vermi, uh, uh, you know, the worms themselves. So it was really one of the very helpful uh, project. Uh, the approach was like to work with the farmers directly from the start uh, to the end. So experts were there, uh, our experts, Bureau of Agriculture experts, and also we used the local uh, community carpenters to produce those. And this was really uptaken by the government. Uh, and now in RC zone, I, I see a lot of information in there. Uh, you know, they, they have like this group, the Telegram, the Telegram group, they, I see a lot of Uh, you know, initiations by the government and uh, the RSC zone uh, Bureau of Agriculture to expand uh, and uh, yeah, reach out more farmers on vermicomposting. So I will stop here and uh, Girma will continue. Uh, thank you. If you have any questions, I will, I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you, Nadi. Uh, I think I consume only two extra minutes probably. Oh, okay. and, uh, <laughs> uh, so if, uh, if MT can uh, compensate that one for me. Yeah. Can you hear me, by the way? I'm talking from Nardo's... Uh... Yeah, Girma, if you can sit a bit closer to Nardo's laptop. Oh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes, better. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I don't want to really take time on, on the current uh, slide because it is uh, uh, just... Um, The main idea is just to implement the sort of revolving fund scheme for farmers so, the, so that they will have a sort of alternative livelihood while they are working on uh, watershed management. Sometimes watershed management might demand like uh, 
living land for for uh, uh, like uh, area closure so that the land will be rehabilitated so in, in line with this one we came up with an idea of uh, having a sort of a revolving fund scheme that's mainly focused on nursery developments that can really uh, uh, finally become an input for for uh, regreening in the area and on the other side farmers who are really uh, losing their land for because of this area closure they they have been engaged in uh, small ruminant as boundary like goats and sheep so that they, they will not really push for really unsustainable uh, agriculture which is not really um, much uh, productive on the other side we also implemented beekeeping so uh, uh, currently farmers are really getting to do good uh, income from that one even what they didn't get from the previous uh, agricultural activity so um, the idea was to uh, bring in uh, jobless women and especially women they used to be uh, engaged uh, and organized as a sort of uh, small and micro enterprises so that uh, finally goods uh, technical and uh, basic financial skill training then they started the uh, this business as part of being engaged in uh, watershed management and this is part of really an award for uh, their contribution in watershed management. Uh, next uh, slide, please. Uh, this slide shows uh, uh, the SMEs who have been engaged in nursery development uh, with the majority of uh, women members uh, having uh, 23 members who, who have been really uh, working as a good uh, efficiency in, in especially in Jeju Arada. Uh, they have been doing this one even under the condition of conflicts, uh, but they, they, they become very successful. Even in the first year, they, they managed to get like 225,000 Ethiopian amber from a single harvest. Next, Next slide, please. Uh, uh, these, these, these two women are really uh, among the uh, one who have been uh, uh, benefited from the small micro, small ruminant boundary, uh, especially the, the the one with the uh, with with the sheep started from zero and finally currently after even repaying fully repaying. Uh, her loan from the project, she have she has like twelve sheep, totally from zero to twelve sheep. It's really a big difference for uh, uh, low income uh, farmers who have been really really currently this uh, uh, revolving fund is uh, well uh, well performing. Uh, it's a, a repayment status is like ninety seven daba. So this is really very working, and at the same time, just encouraging people to be engaged in watershed management, and uh, it co contributes a lot for the sustainability as well. Next, please. Yeah, this is the one of the the approach for uh, demonstrating and uh, introducing beekeeping in the era. People were not really uh, using this potential previously, previous to our uh, intervention. Uh, as you can see, the yellow one is uh, the modern beehives and the other one is a transitional type of beehives. For the transitional beehives, we, we trained the community just to make by themselves with local materials. Currently, the, uh, the uh, really the, Honey, you saw in the previous video was really from the product of this one, and the, uh, people are really appreciating this one. And uh, the one who are really using that uh, schema becoming a good model for other farmers to be uh, beekeepers in the area. So this is also one of the achievement of the project. Next, please. Uh, on the other side, um, 
this uh, project was very flexible because we were working on monitoring, evaluation, and the learning. Uh, sometimes we are not pushing farmers for unsustainable uh, uh, activities. On the other side, we are working in a very um, uh, harsh environment, especially in, in Gubalafto area, there was a conflict uh, uh, in northern part of Ethiopia. By that time, this project really re rescheduled and replanned itself and uh, uh, support the community over there in social social uh, support, especially we are working on how, how to really uh, stress management, forgiveness, uh, resilience in such areas and uh, in, in such conditions. And uh, uh, conflict management were also part of the our training, especially being with the uh, people from uh, Waldo University, that Waldo University, sorry. So the project was really uh, engaging that one in very flexible way. Well. And uh, the approach was just using a sort of really community gathering, like a sort of co coffee ceremony where people can easily uh, talk with their uh, neighbors what they feel during the, uh, the, the this uh, complex time and uh, uh, to avoid some stigmas, stigma among really the victims one. So um, uh, finally, we learned a lot from this having, especially this coffee ceremony, people became came together to discuss about the conflict, how to really uh, get a resilience of that one. And uh, finally, when we are conducting this uh, uh, final workshop for this project, some of the people who, who have been uh, really meeting for the purpose of this uh, social support, they become an association and uh, with really a great uh, saving uh, scheme uh, right now, they are in a position to get some sort of uh, uh, even loan from from uh, uh, local microfinance as well as ev even from the bank in the future. Uh, next, please. Basically, individual counseling were also part of this one, and uh, uh, the 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 project did its space. And uh, on the other side, the project uh, tried to support, especially the women. Uh, uh, in provision with uh, some homestead portrait farming training and the business business skill and uh, uh, provision of uh, some chicken so from that one people can easily recover from the uh, effect of this conflict in the area and uh, it was really uh, work done very well and uh, on top of that the uh, the training uh, has used us really um, a good lesson for for the even agriculture office in the area, and we we were really uh, uh, promoting this hatching plan, the the one who have been uh, demonstrating by the the, the, the these uh, colleagues over there. I, I think he's one of the. Uh, Sorry, let, let me finish. Yeah, uh, this hatching plan used to more productive to homestead. Uh, uh, chicken production or poultry farming because it saves time uh, and the energy for the chicken so that the chicken can easily get water and the food from feed from the same and that so that it, it saves this energy that can help uh, the eggs to be easily a very productive chicken. Thank you. Let me leave uh, the, the floor for the next uh, speaker. Thank you very much, Nardos and Girma. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have time to dive into all topics. But as I said before, please use the chat to yeah keep connecting with the, the team in Ethiopia and ask them questions in case Thank anything you. is still unclear or if you want to learn more about any of these uh, interesting points. Uh, then now I want to move on to the Bureau of Agriculture. Um, we pre-recorded a video with Gitachu. Uh, I, I checked the participant list. Unfortunately, he is not here uh, to do it live. So we have to use this video. Uh, internet connection is not really reliable these days. Um, but yeah, luckily we're still able to hear from him. I am Gita Chongdaye, working as a natural resource director for Amhara region for many years. Also a food security advisor in the region. Also 
uh, working for Meta Meta for uh, many years. Coming to uh, today's webinar, uh, thank you very much for giving this opportunity to explain uh, the GFF uh, progress in Amhara uh, region. So as an introduction, the Amhara region has long experience in natural resource uh, conservation and play a significant role uh, in the country in introducing different uh, technologies. But uh, natural resource conservation is beyond the rehabilitation and conservation of the degraded uh, watershed. It needs to uh, play uh, a role in the economic progress of the community. So as the goal of the JFF is to strengthen the rural community already on the build up institutions uh, and rehabilitated watersheds with the government's uh, structure, it plays different role in the region, especially it strengthens the, uh, already the ongoing natural resource conservation, especially on the forestation program. Uh, plays a significant role in the surface road watershed water management, different soil fertility package, voluntary farming, also uh, institutional strengthening, specifically the Watershed Users Association and as an umbrella on the microclimate uh, management. So JFF was executed in the region through uh, regular government structure from the region, uh, Bureau of Agriculture, zone difference experts, Warada and Kavale, and it was uh, ongoing with the build-up government structure. This minimizes the management cost of the project, and we focus on the investment activities of the project. But it was challenged by the COVID and the conflict in the region. But due to the flexibility nature of the project, we use the different strategies to uh, uh, overcome these uh, challenges. Especially the GFF play a great role uh, after the war in order to uh, uh, rehabilitate the affected uh, community. So in general, I want to focus on what are the takeaways or lessons taken from the GFF uh, specifically and meta meta in general. The main thing is uh, flexibility of the project when the community face stress problem due to the conflict and uh, COVID. The flexibility nature of the community, the GFF, enable the community to get immediate support from GFF, and especially in the household policy, uh, in introducing different vegetables, veterinary medicines, and veterinary materials. This really plays a great role in the uh, life of the community. The other is different innovations, you know the labor intensive farmers are getting older introducing different innovative agricultural technologies is very uh, vital meta meta introduced different uh, technologies taking this as a lesson the bureau of agriculture established a special uh, directorate you know, that works specifically on uh, innovations because the current generation is not labor intensive as his uh, predecessors. So this is the main taken from uh, Meta Meta. The other is the liquid biofertilizer, the international uh, fertilizer crisis has significant impact, especially in developing countries, specifically in Amhara region. So the future, in the future, uh, we should focus on locally available technologies. So this liquid fertilizer become as a package, a crop training package, and this is a great achievement. Also the microclimate, we are focusing on international uh, or national uh, or uh, regional uh, climate issues, but this is not uh, more valid. We should focus on the micro uh, climate. So all the package, the trainings are shifted from macro to micro level. The other is road water management. Really, it is becoming as one of the main part of the regional conservation uh, strategy. Road, 
product control was not taking that much attention by the government. But after we uh, advertise the negative impact of this uh, rodent uh, infestation, now also it has been one part of the crop protection uh, strategy. So in the future, we uh, plan uh, to scale up all these findings uh, by uh, documenting best uh, practices and incorporating in the regular extension uh, package, especially this, the, the liquid fertilizer, the technological uh, innovations. The microclimates are now part of the regional uh, training uh, manuals. So in general, it plays a significant role in the uh, policy influence of uh, the region, uh, but there are some issues that need more verification and hope we will also uh, finalize uh, with the support of uh, different uh, projects. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you, Kitachu, uh, even though he was not here live, but uh, I'm happy we could still hear from him. Uh, so we be before we move on to the to the Q and A, we have a final section on the webinar where we want to share with you our lessons learned. Uh, Kitachu already shared a few from the uh, perspective from the, of the Bureau of Agriculture, but yeah, well, of course, when you implement a program for four years, uh, you encounter many challenges, um, which also result in yeah, in even more valuable lessons as well. Uh, so today we want to share with you the main three. And we'll dive into each of them separately. Uh, so the first one, um, saying that the path to a greener rural future is uh, more than the transition from conventional to regenerative agriculture. Um, so yeah, the first big lesson uh, or insight that we that we quickly gained is that yeah, to have a greener, more blossoming rural future. Um, we we don't have only should look at the transition from conventional to regenerative agriculture. Uh, other factors such as local economic development, improved transport, uh, road connections are very essential as well. And together, all these um, uh, components from the different form different building blocks that are required for for more overall transition in in the rural areas. And this is why within GFF, uh, we try to address all these different puzzle pieces and not only focus on regenerative agriculture as a single component. And so of course, regenerative agriculture role practices are very rooted in local services and inputs, as was also mentioned by Nardos and Girma. And these inputs and services uh, require, they can also increase the jobs in agriculture and agri-services which then boost the rural economy and uh, create more livelihood options as well, especially for younger people. So this is something we really try to focus on. Um, yeah, and see this bigger picture and, and connect these different dots. Then the second one, um, sorry. The, is that the uh, embeddedness in the implementing organization uh, creates modalities for skill and is really key for sustainability. So, of course, uh, the two partners that we worked in for this project were the uh, bureaus of agriculture in Amhara and Romia, and it was really essential to integrate uh, the activities into their day-to-day -day operations. And so we didn't want to focus only on having great activities that are working well, but the most important thing was that the people who are trying to implement these, uh, that they are really able to do it and internalize it and through that also skill it. So of course, GFF was a program of four years, um, but it doesn't stop after these four years. Uh, we really aimed to have it continue through the work of the bureaus of agriculture. And on an even smaller scale, uh, one example is that the GFF activities are handed over to the community watershed user cooperatives. Uh, this was done in Amhara. If there are any more questions about that, we can uh, use that for the Q&A. As I saw Bantam Luck is here from the Amhara Bureau of Agriculture, and he has been working a lot on that as well. 
Then the third lesson is that regenerative agriculture is very relevant in, in times of conflict. Nardos already briefly touched upon the fact that um, the biofertilizer production became even more relevant because the synthetic fertilizer was not uh, able to be delivered also due to the conflict in uh, on uh, in Ukraine um but also the local conflicts uh, yeah made improved regenerative agriculture in, in high demand um and it even emphasized the reliance on local resources to to make the agricultural inputs uh, that there was really a lifeline uh, strategy in the disturbed situation but also to be a sort of beacon uh, of hope beacon of hope so Girma already briefly explained how um, we used homestead poultry activities to sort of kickstart the local economy again and give people some extra income after these harsh times of, of conflicts to really rebuild their lives uh, and household economies after the war so these were our three main lessons learned and then we're right in time to have a, a 10 minute final discussion um, so please raise your yeah your virtual hand uh, or just unmute yourself and yeah share your questions, thoughts, comments, or remark, or you can write something in the chat and then uh, we can discuss it. I see that there are quite some questions in the chat. Is there someone who wants to unmute themselves and ask it out loud in the in the group? Uh, Girma, you raised your hand. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. As usual, I, I use the Nardos computer to talk. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I found two questions in the chat box. One is from uh, uh, Hussein, our colleague from uh, Artisan. He asked the status of uh, the scale of irrigation uh, projects. Uh, the study was the study and the design is completely done and uh, uh, ready. And uh, uh, the final issue is because of security situation in the area uh, didn't allow us the board of directors of Africa juices just hold it is not to really, really approve the budget for that one only due to the security situation in the area otherwise they are very willing to go for that one this is the status so all the environmental and social impact assessment all the design detailed design work and the bill of quantity is already ready and submitted to or the relevant one, and uh, even the this environmental and social impact assessment has been uh, endorsed by the Oromia uh, Bureau of uh, Environmental Protection Authority as well. Uh, come to the next point, that might be from Anna, I think. Uh, any plan to scale it up? Yes, as a project, we feel that we, we we established a good foundation uh, for uh, such regenerative uh, agriculture and uh, we promoted at different scale from the community level to Verda zone region and uh, at federal level especially during our final uh, workshop in Adama uh, we we had uh, a guest from Ministry of Agriculture who, who took this uh, responsibility just to take forward as as country uh, level and uh, support in many ways, even in encouraging some organic produce uh, price addition. This is one of the points they 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 raise. At the same time, we we feel that the stakeholders, especially Bureau of Agriculture and the Minister of Agriculture, will take it over and uh, promote further. As meta meta, yes, we have a plan to make it really further because we are uh, pro uh, developing different concept notes, uh, proposal, and other to take it forward. Uh, 
sometimes it is very difficult to uh, really uh, address all the concerns of special disease uh, uh, fertilizer re related uh, initiative by individual uh, companies or group of consortium, but uh, uh, the this uh, government stakeholder should also give uh, should give due attention just to take forward. Thank you. This is what I want to uh, respond. Yes, thank you, Girma. Uh, I didn't see any more questions in the chat. Uh, Anna, does this answer all your questions or? Yeah, hi, <laughs> good morning. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thank you for the answers. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's a nice project or a program given the fact that all the conflicts and, and the situation which is happening and uncertainties. But I was wondering, since you are, you mentioned several times watershed management, where was uh, the Ministry of Water and Irrigation involved? Or is the same, is the Ministry of Agriculture the same as the Ministry of Water? Uh, because if there's any plan for basin management on a larger scale, uh, that would actually help as well the the agriculture and the and the farmers. Thank you. Yerma, can you respond to Anna? Oh, you're muted still. Yeah. 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 I, I I fully agree with the the idea of uh, Anna. Yes, uh, watershed management really beyond uh, one ministry's role the responsibility. It needs uh, especially the role of uh, the engagement of Minister of uh, Agriculture primarily, then Minister of Water and Energy have also some stake in it. Uh, as part of Ministry of Water and Energy, we were working with Basin uh, Development Admin Office, uh, especially with the Awash Basin Admin Administration Office, who have been really supporting a lot in even giving training for our uh, partners, like uh, Hussein, the one who is really in this uh, meeting, is also among the beneficiary of that uh, training. Uh, as a part of their role in, in this uh, green future farming. So, um, yes, we feel that we engage them uh, when it comes to really high level at ministerial level. Uh, the ministerial uh, level is not really implementing on the ground. That is why we, we went to go work with the Basin Admin Office and the uh, agri and uh, water and energy offices at different level in both in Balafu and the RC zone. So yeah. we feel that's one all of uh, been really uh, engaged to, to to the level expected level even. Thank you, Girma. Does that answer your question, Anna? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay. Um, let me check. Uh... Are there any final questions? I don't see any hands raised um, and the chat is empty. So then let me show you the final slide. Um, during the four years of GFF, we worked on many shareable resources. Um, we have the GFF Ethiopia block bundle which is available through the Meta Meta website. Maybe one of my colleagues can share the link in there as well. Uh, we also have this document available in Amharic and Avano Romo. So in case you wish to print these, um, yeah, let, let us know and we're, we're happy to share these with you. And then of course we have many manuals and flyers also available in English and Amharic uh, and Avano Romo. And yeah, we're also happy to, to share this. Um, yeah, so feel free to reach out to us. Um, also, in, if you have any sharing thoughts uh, or more info required, please let me know. And uh, yeah, we're happy to connect in the future over this topic. So then I would like to thank everyone for participating in the webinar uh, and it, your attendance and time and attention. And then um, hopefully we uh, connect in the future again. <laughs>